most talk about branding today, so I, I guess uh, I'll try to kind of like live up to that. The role of your business is actually super simple. We have two things that we need to worry about, our fans and our brand. Uh, if you look at uh, Rovio and you look at Angry Birds, uh, the way we built the Angry Birds brand, it's actually very different uh, from how a lot of these, uh, let's say, older and more more traditional brands how they built uh, built their their brands. And, and Angry Birds is uh, uh, probably we're the, the fastest growing uh, consumer brand ever if you look at kind of like the brand awareness and all that. But what makes it very interesting is that uh, we did it very differently. We did that with the games, so starting there, and as I mentioned, two and a half billion of those games out there. Uh, so that's, uh, even if that would be just like impressions of like some banner, that would be pretty good. But when you think about it, that it's actually two and a half billion games that people have been playing and, you know, some of you probably have been playing our games for hours, so it's it's a, it's a very powerful way to kind of like get the brand in your head and like staying there forever. So uh, so it's it's actually a very very powerful way uh, uh, to build a brand, and uh, also very interesting that uh, coming kind of like from the digital side uh, with the brand and then also making it very very physical. So I mean I brought some. Some of our latest toys actually from our like Angry Birds Stella uh, series with me. So uh, we're not kind of like resting on our laurels. We actually have like new physical instance, uh, instances of our, our brand. The problem is that with hundreds of thousands of games, even if it's a great game, who cares if nobody knows about it? You know, so it, it's really uh, the challenge there is not so much getting the game out there, but it's how do you make sure that somebody kind of like notices that game and, and actually like cares and downloads it. If you look at uh, you know the games market, uh, it's very very clear that it's not like there's a shortage of games. I mean, you know, you go to the app store and you can find a lot of them. So, uh, and, and this is actually true for most markets uh, today, that it's not like there's a shortage of products. So then what really becomes uh, the most important thing is that, okay, how do you stand out? How do you make sure that people notice you? And, and this is, uh, you know, just as much true, you know, for companies as it is for people. Uh, if you think about the brand, of Angry Birds. So first time you hear the name, you know, it's, it's one of these brands that it begs for a question. Why are the birds angry? And, and I think that that's great because then, then you're already there, people are starting thinking about your brand. So I think that that's always, you know, a good uh, test, you know, when you think about uh, how to name your product, your game, your service. It's very, very important to create some kind of reaction. So when we started Slush, the whole idea was that, okay, it's not going to be one of these wannabe Silicon Valley events. And also, I think one thing that is very important when you do marketing, when you do branding, it's always very good if it has something to do with like reality and truth. So then, for all of us who live in Finland, and if you you know come here in November, but you know it's it's typically it's cold, dark, slush on the ground. That's the reality. Hence slush, not the Silicon Valley. But that doesn't stop us from doing and creating amazing startups. Uh, you know, it was very easy for us to make this, you know, so that Slush is now the biggest and best startup event on the planet because Finnish people are the best marketeers on the planet. So, you know, like super easy. And I always get this reaction when I say this in Finland that people are laughing. But guess what? When I say the same thing in the US or China, people will just say, okay, Finnish people, best marketeers on the planet, you know, taking notes, taking notes. <laughs> so, you know, so, so, you know, like, but, this, but this is something that is super, super important also, you know, and part of branding. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in what you're doing. And you have to believe that you are doing the best products, the best games, the best services on the planet.
the story. Uh, you always have to have a story to back up, you know, the brand. Okay, if you look at like what we've been doing on the Angry Birds side, so yes, we got two and a half billion games out there. We have a few people now knowing the brand. Because of that, we could expand to other areas. So yes, we started with games. Then we bought animation studio uh, that is now uh, uh, Rovio Animation. It's the biggest animation studio in Northern Europe. And uh, uh, because of our brand and our distribution uh, that we built with the games, so when we launched our animated uh, series, we actually uh, didn't stop there. We also launched uh, our own network. So we added one button to all of our, I think at that time, one point three billion or, or so games. Uh, so overnight we added one button. Uh, so next to the play button, we added the watch button. Uh, the Angry Birds uh, Tunes TV, the watch button. And overnight, we created one of the biggest uh, video distribution networks on the planet. And uh, I think yesterday we announced that we now hit 4 billion views for our animated series. So uh, we used the power of the brand, the power of our distribution network to get the animated series out there to put more depth, put more detail into the brand. So again, we used the brand to make the brand stronger. How many of you guys have heard about the Moon Festival? Okay, cool. Like one or two people. And yeah, you're probably from China, so you might have heard about it. Okay, so it's a big thing in China. It's not quite as big as Chinese New Year that a few more of you might have heard about. But anyway, uh, three year, years ago, uh, we created a big update to our Angry Birds Seasons game uh, around this Chinese Moon Festival. And, and you can look up, you know, the thing on Wikipedia and how it's like celebrated. But one part of the Moon Festival celebration is that you eat mooncakes. So we also incorporated that into our game. We did some animations and we created Angry Birds Mooncakes. So Angry Birds branded mooncakes, and we've been now doing that for three years, I think, or four. Okay, but anyway, for like a few years. So we have created a tradition, okay, still like small scale, but still a tradition that one way of celebrating the Moon Festival is by eating Angry Birds mooncakes. So we always have like different designs and we have uh, supported that by, uh, you know, through our games and all of that. Uh, the interesting thing here is that, uh, okay, the Moon Festival is a big deal in China and okay, same kind of festival is celebrated in Japan and Korea and like in the region. Uh, but the really interesting thing here, and you know, like, no, think about Coke, think about Christmas and Santa Claus, so okay, we all know that Santa Claus is red, but that's actually because Coke made it so. Uh, when we did this Moon Festival uh, update to our game, tens of millions of people outside of China, first time ever that they hear about the Moon Festival through our game. And then looking at what is happening in the world, there's a few uh, Chinese people, as we all know, and there's more and more Chinese influence. So in a few years time, who knows, but maybe, you know, people all over the planet celebrate the Moon Festival by eating Angry Birds Mooncakes, because that's the thing that you're supposed to do. So those are the kind of things that we are thinking about, like long term, you know, building a brand, building habit.